Please join us for our processional hymn, O Day of Radiant Gladness, number 48. Welcome to online worship with us at St. Anne's Episcopal Church in North Billerica, Massachusetts. If you have comments or questions, ideas or concerns, please don't hesitate to email me, the Bridge Priest, Jennifer at rector at stannes-billerica.org. We are very pleased to welcome our own regional canon, Martha Hubbard, as our preacher this morning. Daily Morning Prayer, Rite 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, so to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us now in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our, our mouth, mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Glory Father, to the Father and, to and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a, is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth 
and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. This morning's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went out of the house and sat behind the sea. Such great, such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parable, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came along and ate them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lore of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hi, I'm Martha Hubbard, regional canon for the north and western region of our diocese, and I'm so pleased to be with you as your preacher today. I'm going to be basing my sermon on our passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, 1 through 9, 8 through 23. That passage begins with these words. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. That same day. Those words indicate that context is important here. If we read back a few verses in Matthew's Gospel, we find that this is the same day that Jesus redefined family. It's the day on which his mother, Mary, and his brothers came looking for him, found the house where he was teaching, and sent word into him that they wanted to see him. Jesus' response was that biology is not the only way to define family. On that day, Jesus redefined mother and father, sisters and brothers, to include those who are striving for the purposes of God. I imagine that this sent shockwaves through Jesus' family tree. Truth that redefines and enlarges the definition of belonging often does that. That same day, Jesus got up and went out of the house. He never called any house home for long. He was not going to be deterred from his sense of purpose. And he did not want to be domesticated, owned, or tamed. That day, that same day, Jesus got up and left the house and went to the sea, where he got into a boat and began to teach a great multitude that was gathered there at the seashore. Now this day, today, pandemic restrictions may keep us home, but in spirit today, we can gather with that multitude. They came seeking to know how to be Jesus' family, attracted to the way he lived and breathed the gracious purposes of God. He, you might say, was contagious with the power, the loving power of God. And ever since, human hearts have longed to catch that contagion. 
Looking out on this multitude, across time and space, Jesus reads hearts. He knows our human condition so well, and so he invites all of us into a parable. The main characters are God, the sower, God's life-giving word, which is the seed revealed to us in scripture and in the person of Jesus himself. And the third is us, the soil, the dirt, the earth. That's us, humanity, which should help us with our humility by reminding us of whence we come. Jesus tells that God the sower goes out spreading handfuls of seed across the ground, seemingly unconcerned about where the seeds land. The act of sowing is generous and joyful. According to Jesus, God isn't an efficient sower or a careful sower, but rather an abundant, passionate, whirling kind of sower, casting seed hither and yon. I'm personally so grateful for that. I'm so grateful because to receive the seed, my heart needs this lavishly generous sower. In my heart, there is fertile ground, but my heart also has a hard packed path and my heart harbors rocks and my heart has a thorny patch. How about yours? I don't think it's a good use of time to try to identify path-like people or rocky or thorny or fertile type people. All these conditions, I believe, exist in each one of us more or less. Instead, I think it's better use of our time to ask some parable-based questions of ourselves. Questions like these. What forces in ourselves and in our society act like the birds in the parable, snatching away the power of God's word before it can even work in us. How does the way that we live reveal our rocky places where the word of God can't take root? What thorns rise up and grab and choke the seedlings of God's word in us? And where are we already deep down mulched and fertile, bearing the fruit of God's word? In these unprecedented times, these questions turn my mind to the immense opportunity now before us to work for racial justice and equity in our society. I've been talking with a friend of mine every Thursday morning for the past several weeks about how we as two white women can best engage with the work, the important work of the Black Lives Matter movement. Those conversations have made me see that though for years I've felt deeply called to be an ally to those who bear the brunt of violence and racial oppression among us, I have also been some at times thrown off course from that work towards justice by the preoccupations of my particular life situation. This morning, I believe this parable calls me to recognize that it's the rocky places of my unexamined white privilege and the thorny patch of the powerful status quo of our society that allow me as a white person the space to get thrown off track from racial justice work, while at the same time, brothers and sisters of color don't get even a day off from the ways in which racism profoundly marks their lives. People in the streets are once again boldly telling this truth. Let those of us with ears hear. The Black Lives Movement is telling the truth that our societal field has a long way to go before we are abundant with the harvest of love and justice for all people. Spending time with this parable can impel people like me 
those of us who hold privilege in our society, to be honest about the realities of our common life. This parable proclaims that God is now and has always been about the business of redeeming everything. All of me, all of you, all of us, all of the broken down structures of our society and our world community. And a chief way that God goes about this, the parable says, is by spilling God's word out on all of us, spreading it over even our most unattractive parts. So this parable can help us white, white folk to let go of defensive anger and denial on the one hand and debilitating guilt on the other so that we can be made ready for the work of justice. What God needs from us and what our fellow citizens need from us is honesty and cooperation. Our part is to admit our brokenness and to lay it open to the divine sower's attention. Once touched by God's word, things are never quite the same again. As the divine sower works on the rocks of our fears and the thorns of our unexamined biases, God reveals that all of us, white people and people of color together, belong as one united, well-tilled piece of sacred ground, beloved of God, and necessary to the purposes of God's reign. Our part is to seize this day and not to fall back on interpretations of God's word that keeps some of us comfortable at the expense and detriment of other members of our human family. So let's encourage each other to stay with to stay with the disorientation and the discomfort that comes in owning up to these difficult truths. Then God can claim us and change us. For those of us who are white, let's commit that we are going to read and to march. We're going to listen and to serve we are going to watch and to pray in ways that enlarge our understanding of the starkly different life realities of white people and people of color in our nation and in our world. And let's find ways to keep each other accountable in this holy work of becoming fertile ground and then, as our collect for today implores, we may know and understand what things we ought to do and also may have the grace and the power to faithfully accomplish them. We do have a long way to go. This parable promises that when we open ourselves this way, God's seed, among us in the sacred texts that we read together each, each week in our worship and in the person of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord among us. That divine seed will take root in us. My mothers and fathers, my brothers and sisters, the parable teller is out ahead of us beckoning us to follow. May we yield to God, the divine sower, and make way for a harvest of justice and love for all. In the name of Christ Jesus, the Lord of that harvest. Amen. We'll now read the affirmation of faith from the New Zealand prayer book. What is your faith? I, I believe, believe and trust in God, God the Father, 
maker and sustainer of all things. And in God the Son, my Savior Jesus Christ, and in God the Holy Spirit, giver of life and truth, this is my faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And follows the suffrages. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant grant us your salvation. salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And and guide us in the way of justice and truth. truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day. O Lord, Lord, mercifully mercifully receive the prayers prayers of your people people who call upon upon you and and grant that they may know and understand understand what what things they ought to do and and also also may have have grace grace and and power power faithfully faithfully to accomplish them. them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning will follow Form 3, found on page 387 of your prayer books. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, pray for the Anglican Church of New Guinea, Sorry, that was the Anglican cycle of prayer. The diocesan cycle of prayer. Pray for the parishes of the Mystic Valley Deanery, St. Luke's Church in Glacia, St. Lucas, Chelsea, Grace Church, Federated, East Boston, Grace Church, Everett, and Hispanic Ministries. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Pray for our presiding bishop, Michael our own bishops, Alan and Gail, and our priest, Jennifer, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that that there may be justice justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let Let light light perpetual perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May May we also also come come to share share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Especially this morning we remember Diane Brown, John Phillips, Kathy O'Neill, Norm and M.J. Zarella, Janet Lina, Margaret Westerland, Barbara Rogers, Pat McLeaven family, Cindy, Patricia Mobley, Susan Fader, Fred Brown, Debbie King, Kathy and Greg Harper, Irene and Kenneth Meridian, Linda E., Mary Hyatt, Dolly Longamere, Jose Torres Sr., Sarah Komarinsky, Kathy Jeffrey, Marie Horgan, Joshua Young, and Dinah Holman. I'll invite anyone who wants to add their own petitions at this time. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. This morning's closing hymn will be Blessed Jesus at Thy Word, number 440.